First off, thank you so much for taking some of your time sure. to, to chat with us today and sure. for having us in this beautiful setting. It's nice to see you in person after many like many years now of virtual conversations. Yes, that's for sure. That's for sure. A beautiful place to do, especially this time of year. The staff does an amazing job of decorating. What's it like to come here? This is your office space. This is your. Oh, this mean, is for it's, you. It's it's amazing. It's a real pleasure. I mean, you know, I we talked about reading, but history. I, I like history as well. And when you think about, uh, you know, the first uh, lieutenant governor sat over here and did his work, and uh, and it kind of resembles fairly closely, I'm told, to what it what it was like back then. Okay. Yeah, lots of history. Let's start with the general, and then we'll get into the specific. Sure. Looking back on 2021, what do you think you'll remember most about it? Well, I hate to say it, but probably COVID and how it impacted not only my work, but everybody else's work and lives. So that that's probably the number one thing I'll remember about this past year when I reflect on it down the road. But at the same time, thinking about the resilience of people and obviously Saskatchewan people, and how they've managed to live through this uh, this period in our history, and and sometimes not so well, and other times, uh, you know, doing okay. Yeah. What are some things that you were able to do personally and professionally this year that filled your bucket, that made you happy, that you were able to take part in? Well, I think you know after we or I, I guess to be more specific thought through how I would perform my duties as Lieutenant Governor and accepted that most of that would be virtual or written messages, which I do quite often. Then it was a matter of reconnecting with those organizations that we would normally visit in person. And so the first opportunity to do that was really a, you know, a happy moment, if I can put it that way, for me and for Donna, because Donna is always with me at these events, especially the in-person events. So being able to go out and actually meet people in person the first time, that, that was uh, uplifting. Do you remember the first event? You know, I don't, I don't. It's, uh, you know, it kind of blends in with everything else that, that we do, but uh, yeah, I just remember that being able to get out there and, and meet with people was, was great. Two years ago, when you were appointed to, to the position, what were some of your goals as the Queen's representative? Well, I guess I'll frame my response by saying, first of all, just as background, Lieutenant Governors have the opportunity to put their support behind issues or topics that are important to them on a personal, maybe even a professional level before they became the Lieutenant Governor. For me, it was a little bit of both. I, uh, I had done some work with the Ministry of Education just after I left the RCMP. And that reinforced my belief in the importance of education, particularly for Indigenous people. And so that was at the forefront of my thinking. How can I support students who are struggling to, one, stay in school and to achieve the outcomes that they want? And along with that, just that relationship kind of situation between ind Indigenous and non-Indigenous people here in the province. And that goes back to my time in the RCMP, very much uh, of a, a concern, if I can put it that way, but also just thinking about it as an obstacle to really creating those strong relationships that we need to create that positive change we need across our communities here in the province and across the country for that matter. And that led to me thinking about something more broad because, I mean, I, I have varied interests and certainly you, you can only do so much. And so I started thinking about what, well, what is all encompassing in this period of time in our history and I settled on reconciliation. When I think about reconciliation, it, it includes relationship building in fact, that's the foundation of true reconciliation is to have strong relationships. And also thinking about how youth fit into that picture of reconciliation. Because the future is about them. About us to a certain extent, but more so for young people and, and what we leave behind for them 
in terms of relationships, in terms of understanding, in terms of coming together as different peoples for a better future for all. I mean, it sounds a little simplistic, but ultimately that's, you know, that's where my thinking lies uh, day to day. That sounds like a heart goal. Like that's a very heartfelt answer. Because it's, it's something that, uh, you know, I've lived and I thought about, uh, as I said before, in my career with the RCMP, but also as a young indigenous person growing up on reserve in Northern Saskatchewan. Very early on, I saw the differences between life on the reserve and life in the town of Lorange. And what people had, what people didn't have, and why my friends and relatives didn't graduate from high school when I did. And so this thinking is founded on many, many years, I suppose, of, uh, of personal experience and observations. Have you made inroads or progress on those goals, especially over the last year as you've been able to see people? Well, progress is hard to measure, but I certainly get positive feedback in terms of my involvement and in, in my statements, if that's uh, even the right way to put it, but just talking to people across the province and getting feedback, uh, you know, the vast majority of that is very positive. And remembering I'm only one person, certainly being the lieutenant governor gives me the opportunity, I suppose, to to be in positions or in conversations that I might not otherwise have, and with people that have a lot more influence than I do. And so, you know, I do think about that and whether or not I'm having an impact. And I think at the end of the day, each of us has to be satisfied with what we do on an individual basis, and, and so far I am. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Um, you've been able to participate in way more events the last 12 months versus 2020, and at those events, you've been able to use your language. You've been able to speak in Cree. Yes. I'm wondering how it's felt to be able to use your language in such a public way, and I'm hoping you may be able to tell me that answer in Cree and then in English. Sure. You give me the go, no ma Negi <laughs> He was in notes that he said, Ski the Mittoach, the Wago Tots in notes, Gigi, Muscoat, Snoma, Kaki though, at the Sit Nog, Egomena, Otieti, Snig, and Gitchas Misnog, notes, Tegi, Middle, Middle Matso, and Gitta Miscaho, the Wit, the Gitap Matsego, Monia, you got the Mamitone, the Hotan, Soma Tegi, see, notes, Middle Witch at the Schema, Kaki though, it nog. So what I said was, uh, coming into the office, well, first of all, I said, you know, my language is a gift. And so coming into the office, Donna and I, who speaks Cree as well, a different dialect, we talked about how we could incorporate Cree into our work. And why? Uh, to create understanding, to educate, to allow other people to hear the language and appreciate uh, the, the language for what it is. Uh, and it's a reflection of who I am, a reflection of my community and of, uh, to a certain degree, of Indigenous people here in the province. So as we look forward to the work, how do we bring young people into this world to allow them to have a a better view, I suppose, and, and look for ways to better work with uh, non-Indigenous people and for the benefit of all. How does the fact that you are an Indigenous person in this role influence your connection with the people of Saskatchewan? Well, first of all, I guess it's, it, it's a unique position to be in because I'm the first Indigenous Lieutenant Governor for the province. And I consciously brought my language and culture, as I just said, uh, into the role 
because I think it's important to create that broader understanding that the province of Saskatchewan is made up of more people than each of us would think about day to day, but certainly historically speaking, Indigenous peoples are the first peoples of this land. And I wouldn't want that to be kind of put off to the side just because I'm taking on this, uh, this important role and to fit into uh, kind of a prescribed box, so to speak, and, and follow convention in terms of, of the role and, and the duties that are performed in a very specific way. And so I, th I saw it as an opportunity to educate and but also show my appreciation to my ancestors and the people that came before me that I haven't forgotten that side of who I am. And, and so uh, I think it's been of tremendous benefit. I've had lots of positive comments about the language, even though many people wouldn't understand it. They said, we appreciate the fact that you would incorporate that into the work that you do. So it's, it's been very positive. People are talking a lot about identity these days. What are your thoughts about identity and membership in the community? Well, it's important. You know, there's uh, obviously many, many articles here in the past few weeks, particularly about uh, identity and, and, and what it means. And, and I think ultimately communities have to decide who is a member of their community and they set the rules and they set the parameters and uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that and it really is important to I think uh, because our communities are getting so diverse and so integrated if I can put it that way uh, that sometimes uh, that becomes difficult for people and when we talk even more broadly when we talk about residential schools and and the 60s scoop and individuals who were stripped of their culture, of their language, and f you know, trying to redefine themselves. I think that conversation sometimes becomes very difficult for them. And so it's not fair for people to be coming into that or stepping into that world and, and maybe claiming you know, uh, identity when there's questions about that. Let's talk about reconciliation. You've already brought it up. Um, Canada had its first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Yes. How did you spend the day and what did it mean to you? Well, I guess first of all, uh, it's an important day. Important day because it really is about an important, although dark, hi period in our history. And I'm talking about not only Saskatchewan, but the country. But to bring it to the forefront and to be recognized in, during a, by a special day, I think was uh, an important step for, for Canada, for sure. And for me personally, uh, beyond that, uh, you know, I'm a residential school survivor, a second generation. And I know and I see still to this day, the ongoing impacts of that period of history. And I think it's important for all of Canadians, all Canadians to have some understanding of what that, what that means, what that period in our time uh, did to our people, to Indigenous people, and the ongoing impacts. So when we talk about moving forward, the first step is really about understanding. And so creating a special day brings more attention to residential schools and it gives an opportunity for people to try to better understand what that means. Because as with many, many issues, you, you hear a word or a couple of words and people say, well, that, you know, that's part of our history and it impacts us in a bad way. Okay, so fine, move on. And with residential schools, we can't do that. It, it's such uh, an important conversation that needs to continue so that that understanding goes on, goes deeper, uh, so people then can be in a better position to say, okay, 
I understand and I know how I can move on and maybe how I can help uh, my community or my family even uh, uh, move on from this. How do you see your role, you've touched on this a little bit, um, your role as Lieutenant Governor helping move reconciliation along in Saskatchewan or in the country as a whole? Well, I think, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm in a unique position because when I'm Indigenous to, uh, you know, I went to residential school and so I have that lived experience that I can share. And, and I'm kind of standing in two worlds here when I, when I say that, uh, you know, I come from an Indigenous world, but work in a non-Indigenous world predominantly. And so that gives me the opportunity to really support one group and on the other hand, uh, educate and support people that don't know enough about the issue. And so uh, traveling around and talking about it, uh, incorporating reconciliation into some of my presentations, uh, you know, is uh, something that I can continue to do. Uh, more concretely here at uh, Government House, I made the decision to uh, initiate discussions with the provincial government on establishing a memorial for residential schools. And so that work is ongoing. I received support and based on uh, just uh, I guess a proposal to the government that that this would be a good place to have that and so that uh, work continues and I think that will be a, a lasting uh, I was going to say legacy but it's not really my legacy but a lasting uh, monument of the time uh, for future generations to come and look at it, see it, and learn from it, hopefully learn from it. You talk about sharing your lived experience. Just because you are in a position of leadership and power doesn't make it easy to share that lived experience. Is it hard for you to share those stories with people? Absolutely it is, absolutely. And this goes back uh, many, many years when you know I was I guess in positions where I was in a more public position, even within the RCMP in the higher ranks, it was a difficult conversation for me to have. Uh, because there was no, well one, it's very personal, but two, it wasn't a topic that was really uh, common in conversations. And, you know, I mentioned the RCMP because the RCMP are in communities where the ongoing impacts of residential schools are still very evident today. And unfortunately, one of the, the results of that is that people getting into trouble, uh, abusing uh, substances. And in order for the RCMP to do their work in a more uh, proactive and understanding way, they have to know that, they have to try to understand what, what's causing uh, these uh, issues to arise throughout our communities. And uh, so I think that uh, continuing that conversation in every sector is uh, very important. Okay, since you've been appointed, yes. something very exciting has happened at the Governor General side of things. We now have an Indigenous Governor General yes. as well, the first one. How important is it for Indigenous people to be in these highly visible leadership roles, especially when you think of the kids that you've talked about? Well, it's extremely important. And again, I'll go back to the, the fact that Indigenous people are first peoples of this land. And why shouldn't we occupy those positions at, at every level? in every sector and bring that, that unique perspective into those positions. And so when I heard about and we heard about Mary Simon being appointed the Governor General, that was, that was great news. You know, very experienced person who brings uh, not only lived experience but professional experience to the role and I think with a great deal of credibility. So we'll further those conversations that I, even I spoke about here. Uh, particularly, she's talked about reconciliation being very important. And so being Indigenous person, I think, gives us and gives her that, 
that unique perspective to be able to have very personal but also meaningful conversations with, with people across Canada. You meet so many people. You have handed out many awards <laughs> just in the last two years. But in this last year, who's the most interesting person you've met? In the last year, now I have to think back, but um, you know, I go back to what's the best part of this role, and it is about meeting people across the province. And who has impressed me the most? I would have to say, you know, our seniors and our elders. And I say seniors because this event really stands out for me. Saskatchewan is known for volunteerism. I think that's, that's accepted. If not, then I'll debate anybody about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're invited to a seniors recognition event here in Regina where uh, seniors are nominated for volunteerism. And there were two very gracious ladies that were recognized, and they were both over 100 years old. Wow. And one of them in particular was still very active. And so, you know, when, when I meet people like that, when Don and I meet people like that, w we talk afterwards and say that's just absolutely incredible. You know, that people are still willing, if they're physically able to, continue to support their communities in any way that they can. And so those, those events and people that are being recognized for those types of uh, contributions to their communities, those, those are the ones that really stand out. What are your hopes for 2022? 2022, uh, again, uh, it's an unfortunate reality, but uh, get over this obstacle of COVID. Uh, as we're told by professionals, It'll always be here with us, but uh, get to a point where it's manageable and we can carry on in a, in a normal way. And which will, will then allow us to, and I say, when I say yes, for Don and I to get back out, uh, you know, and meeting people, attending events and recognizing people, awarding people for their accomplishments and really just being able to uh, get out there and, and do the best we can with, uh, you know, with what we're given. What are you personally most looking forward to? Do you have a trip planned? Do you get to, to go somewhere or do something that you've really missed? What is personally on your agenda for 2022? Well, I guess uh, on a personal level, and we didn't go there, but uh, I'm still very active and my family is very active. And so every year we find something to participate in that pushes our kind of physical and mental uh, boundaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so being able to, well, two years ago, uh, we uh, had to cancel an event that we were going to last year. It came back in a more limited way. And so this coming year in, in 2022 we're hoping that uh, we can participate more fully in those types of events. What event is it that you're, you're loosely well, alluding there, to? Well there are two things that we really participate in uh, as a family are, are running at, and cross-country skiing. So uh, the cross-country skiing events are, are all over the province and sometimes out of province but a big one that we generally go to as a family is back in our home of La Ronge and it's a marathon event. It's called the uh, Saskalopit. And it's a very popular event. It's kind of the last big event of the year for cross country skiing. And the distances vary from uh, the little skiers skiing a couple of kilometers to uh, others that actually camp overnight and ski over 80 kilometers in total. And Where do you fall into the mix? I've never s stayed overnight, so uh, Generally, I go with for the the 55 kilometer distance. Wow! Yeah, that's impressive. It's fun too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the goal for next year. That's a goal to you know, 
I say I'm active, but it's always nice to have a goal yeah. to uh, work towards. And then the running event is one we do as a family, and it's called the Sinister Seven, and it's a trail run in in the mountains uh, near Fernie, B.C., between Fernie and, and the Alberta border. And it's uh, the total distance, I mean, this gets a little crazy, uh -huh. is 160 kilometers. And there are people that actually run that on their own. So do you break it up as a family? Yes, then? there's there's uh, there's seven legs, sec sections to it, and there's six of us, so my son has run uh, runs two to make up for the difference. So how much of it will you run? Uh, I've stayed with the same section, it's 24 kilometers. Good for you. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun, and I love that you bring your family into it too. Obviously, your family is very important to you. Oh, very so. much so. Very much well, so. Well, thank you so much for this, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, and thank you for coming to visit me here.